It's about time for that full review of the Garmin Enduro 2. Let's do this. <laughs> oh yeah, the Garmin Enduro 2. Let's do this. Um, first of all, I just want to say that this video will be very long, as you probably have seen by clicking on the thumbnails. Uh, the video is all chaptered if you look at the bottom. Um, so if you want to skip to what interests you the most, well, go ahead and do it. I won't be mad, I won't even know. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you want to skip straight to the beginning, you can do that just right now. Uh, because before, I just want to tell you what kind of user I am because I think it's important when I review watch because I will give you my opinion about what I tested with it. And maybe if we are not doing the same sports, we have different needs. So I'm mainly a biker, bicycle, so road, road and mountain. Uh, I do walking, hiking. Uh, I start swimming recently, sometimes I do running, but that is the sport that I do the most. Uh, so maybe if you are doing something else, we have some different needs. I tested the watch for about a month for this very watch, but I tested those watch, the Phoenix 7X, the Apex and the Tactics 7, which are just right there. Uh, and it's basically the same watch. Uh, I mean, it's the same interface. Uh, of course, the screen of the Apex is a bit different, but if we only look at the Garmin uh, Phoenix 7X, the Tactics, and the Android 2, it's basically the very same interface. It's the very same thing, except that the Android 2 is a bit thicker. Uh, you won't realize it unless you take, unless, unless if you take a look at it just like that. Yeah, it's a bit thicker. It's, it's really a bit thicker. And they did it only to put a bigger battery and a stronger flashlight. That's the same, that, that's the only difference. So maybe a video you might want to see also that, in, in which I will pass over the same uh, test that I did right. Uh, this is my, uh, my, 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 my review grid. Uh, so it's always the same, the same grid that I pass through. If you want to see the comparison of those three watch in the same uh, review, the video is just right here. Maybe there? Not sure on which corner. Anyway, you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, let's start to, with the first point. The first point is about the build quality and we will pass to that camera so you can see a bit better. Uh, so the build quality, very, very good. Uh, I mean, it's, it's titanium uh, on the back. I think it's titanium in the front too. It does feel the same on the side. Uh, yes, you have plastic, but I think it's a very good quality plastic. It feels durable. Uh, it feels tough. It, it's, it feels like a great quality watch. Uh, the only point I do have a doubt, it's the band. The band that come with it. Uh, it is nylon and I think the Velcro won't be that durable. Let put a bit more lights into that image. All right. Uh, yeah, that I don't know. I did only test it for about a month. And yeah, uh, we'll see over time. Uh, you have also coming in into the box that um, silicone band. I think this one will be more durable, but this one is by far more comfortable. Uh, now, the next point is about uh, the sapphire screen. Uh, yes, it's a sapphire crystal screen. It is very, very durable. This is the only option you have when you buy the uh, Enduro 2. You can't have a Gorilla Glass. It will be sapphire crystal screen. That is what I recommend anyway uh, if you buy the Phoenix. Please take the Sapphire Crystal screen when you spend that much money 
on a screen, on, on a watch, you don't want to end up with a scratch in it and sapphire crystal screens are almost not scratchable. Yes, they are, as you can see, more reflective, but this is a pretty huge light I've got beside my, <laughs> uh, my camera. And I can tell you that it is, uh, it is easier to read with uh, eyes than a camera. So it is not this bad. Uh, <laughs> also, you can realize that the screen is a little bit inside the bezel. So if you knock it somewhere, you probably won't get it uh, scratch. I just put my gross finger into it, so let's clean that out. Speaking about screen readability, is that a word? Uh, <laughs> let's uh, continue with that point. So yes, the screen is almost all the time easy to read, uh, days and night and in dark environment. I most of the time just take a look at the watch and I can see the numbers clearly. I, does that, I deactivated the, um, well, it's not activated by default. So I did not activate when I'm not into a sport. The fact that when I move the watch, it auto backlight at night and sometime I may need to press the light button to see something. Actually, I put the brightness level to 100% for the purpose of the video. Usually I keep, I keep it at 20%, which, which is uh, enough. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll almost never need to put my finger on, on the light button. It just does the work just fine. I can read it all the time. When I'm into an activity at night, uh, outside, yes, uh, I set it to uh, when you go, oh, sorry, it's in French. I've just made that video in French. I use the watch in English, but I put it in French for the purpose of the French video. So I will change that to English. As you can see, we will navigate inside the menu very quickly. So if I press the menu button, go down to system and then go down to backlight, I have a lot of options. So during an activity, general use and during sleep, you will find the very same option into each of them. And if I go inside during an activity, you will see that uh, wrist gesture, I set it to after sunset. So that way, when I do the, uh, a wrist gesture, which is that one, so pointing toward you so you can take a look at the time, it will light up the screen. Very handful feature, uh, very useful feature. Um, I love it. So readability is very great. Of course, if you compare it with, <laughs> That's the Apex 2. Uh, it is not comparable. Uh, yes, the difference it is is this huge. Uh, that's how it is. So, yeah. Uh, but yes, it come to the cost of the battery life. Actually, as you can see, this one is, is it full? Yeah, 91%. You've got six days of batteries. And uh, this one is, 96 person and 26 days of batteries and this is because I set it to 100% uh, of, of brightness uh, otherwise it would go up to 31 or 32 days something like that so uh, and I also activated the touch screen if I disable it as you can see I can gain a day uh, let leave it on because uh, we will do some uh, demo with it a bit later now let's talk about the options you have when you purchase the watch. Well, you don't. Uh, if you get an Enduro 2, this is the one you get. Uh, basically, it's the very same thing as a gar uh, the band are not the original one. I changed them. We will see that a bit later. Uh, this is the Garmin Phoenix 7X Sapphire. It's the same thing, a bit thicker and with green colors and you don't have the choice but to have it in uh, charcoal gray with the greens. That is the only option. I think it's a shame. Uh, I would like that the Garmin Phoenix 7X would have been the Enduro 2 with all its option. I mean, if you look at the Garmin Phoenix families, 
which include the Phoenix, the Tactics, the uh, Enduro 2, and the Apex because of its screen. It's all the same watch, you do have all the, the same stuff. Uh, but if you go with the Phoenix, you have the choice to have it smaller, bigger, medium size. You have the choice to have it uh, solar, not solar, uh, with a Safari screen or Gorilla screen. You have the choice. When you go with the Android 2, it's this one. That's it. So, yeah. <laughs> If you don't like the color, you can take a Phoenix, you will have the same interface, you will have the same look, but you will be able to choose another color and took something cheaper if you want. Uh, actually, I recommend that one because yes, it's fun to have the flashlight that is stronger than the Phoenix, but uh, anyway, uh, we'll come back to that later. The only thing you will be able to change about the look is the bed. Uh, I was planning to talk about the band later, but let's do this just right now because uh, it is very easy to change. Uh, let's zoom out just a little bit. So uh, <laughs> uh, let's remove my Garmin Tactics from my wrist. I've got a different band over there. You have a lot of choice. Um, <laughs> uh, you can all replace them very quickly. So this is the one that is coming with it. So if I want to remove that one, um, well, I just do that. And that's the slowest one of the band. Uh, so if I want to put this one on top, you see it's just that thing that you pry a little bit and that's it. It's the same principle for every uh, every bend. You just remove it just like that, and it's easier to put back. That's the Phoenix 7X. They all fit together. Uh, well, this this one is the 26. Uh, if I take the Apex, this one is uh, smaller, but they do that bend. That's the. Is it written somewhere? I don't remember by hearth, but uh, that one for the Enduro 2 is the 26 millimeter width. So yeah, all easy to remove just like that. Um, I like them all. Uh, the leather one feels just great. Uh, this is one of my favorite, the tactical nylon, because it just looked better. I think this one looked very uh, cheap. It's not, it's very comfortable, but uh, it looks like a Walmart uh, band. Um, yeah, this one is very, very uh, comfortable and I love the look of it and how easy it is. Whoops, not easy on camera, but very easy to uh, put on and remove. Love it. Uh, Now, if you want to put back the, the original nylon band, just remove that and uh, I just pass it under just like that. And you're done. Well, about the comfort of this one, um, <laughs> uh, it's not the easiest one to put on. Uh, but what I love of it is that you can really adjust it to the millimeter you want. So all day you can just make it a bit more loose. And when you do sport, you just do that and tighten it up a little bit more. Um, it is stretchy. Uh, so at the beginning, what I didn't not like about it is that the watch is kind of heavy. And the band is very light, so it feels unbalanced. But after a few days, uh, well, it became one of my favorite uh, wristband because it's very, very, very comfortable. You kind of forget you have it. Very, very comfortable. Uh, but it's not the one that I use because I think it's ugly. But that is just my opinion. <laughs> uh, about the other uh, 
the other one. This is one of my favorite. Uh, I think it's the one that make it the most balanced, but it's the most heavy. Uh, but well, I kind of pass from a wristband to another. I think they all look great except the uh, silicon and <laughs> the nylon one that come with the Android too. Uh, the other one are all great. I will eventually do a video uh, about those bands uh, to help you choose the white, the, the one that is the best for you. Now, let's talk about GPS precision. Well, it's perfect, like any other Garmin watch. Uh, it, it's it's very good. I mean, it's on the same side of the street. When you turn it, turn might have a little something. Uh, but yeah, GPS precision outside in city, uh, into the forest, always good. There is something new. Uh, they also uh, took it on uh, the firmware update of the Phoenix and the Tactics. Uh, when you go into that system setup and into satellite, the new thing is that auto select. So before we only had GPS, so GPS only, all systems, which is Galileo and all the others and uh, those kind of GPS, you can use all of them. It will pick the best, but it will keep looking uh, which system is the best for your position. Uh, and now, uh, well, the thing is <laughs> that this is the uh, this is what gives you the most battery. Uh, this one will give you less battery, and this one will give you even less. But uh, you gain in precision, but you lose in battery. This one, the auto select, will pick the best for uh, the case. So I think it's a very clever idea. I did test the watch with that. Um, with that mode. Um, well, I did take a look at a ride that I made with uh, the Enduro 2 and the Tactics, and I compare it uh, when I was, the, the Tactics was on GPS only, and this one was on auto, uh, and I did pass into Montreal, uh, into the city with the skyscrapers and, uh, and all those stuff, and well, they both pick up pretty much the same thing. When I did pass under a little tunnel or this kind of things, I might have seen a little variation, but it's pretty much the very same thing. So probably that in the end, I would just set it to GPS only to get the most of my battery. But if you want to have the most precise uh, information, well, I think it's the best option for you. Now, let's talk about the hearth rate sensor. The one half back just right here. If I put my finger in front of it, will I have some lights? Yes, that is the hearth rate sensor. It's a very good hearth rate sensor. Um, much better than the previous series, but it's the very same that you will find on the Phoenix that you can't see because I have the, uh, the titanium wristband, but it's the very same on any watch. So that's the Apex, very, very same hearth rate. That's the same one you will find on any Garmin watch uh, released recently. Um, the only thing I can say is that um, there is a bit of delay. So if I start working very hard and I feel that my hearth rate is very high, it may take a few seconds before it show up on the screen. Uh, I think that it is because they take an average of the last minute. So in case there is an error in the reading, you won't get a crazy number at some point. So I think they just do an average of what the watch read. Um, yeah, but that's the only negative things I can say. Uh, otherwise, it does a pretty good job. The light is uh, the light. The, the the green light at the back is also very discreet. Um, it won't disturb you at any time. I do sleep with it, and it's never disturbing. The next point is about the independency of the watch. What this mean? This mean that this watch is very independent because it doesn't need to be connected to a phone or a computer to make modification or for it to work. 
It is very, very independent. Everything you want to modify, you can do it straight on the watch. For example, if you want to change your uh, watch face, so the information you got here, you go into the menu, watch face, you select, uh, well, you can select another layout or you can uh, change the data. So here is the date, but if I want to have something else, well, I can. Just gonna cancel this, uh, just for you to understand. If you go into an activity, so let's say bike, and you have by default that screen, you don't like it, you go into the menu, bike settings, data screens, and modify it. I wanna change the layout, I want a nine information screen. There I have it, I select it, I change the data fields, and I can uh, change the timer for a hearth rate system, cadence, power fields, temperature fields, elevation, and if I go into elevation, I've got my average ascent, average descent, maximum ascent, descent, elevation chart, uh, uh, actual elevation, total ascent, total. you see, and it's not over. You do have, well, let's put it back to four, whoops, four data fields, because I actually use that screen. Uh, that's the one I had. Let's, I'll modify it later anyway. Uh, so yes, you can change all of those things. You wanna change the language, you have seen it sooner, you go into system, you can change the language, you can change the time, you can change the backlight settings, the touch settings, the satellite settings, uh, the sleep mode, do not disturb hotkeys. You have a lot of things you can modify straight inside the watch and it's not over. There is a ton of menus, there is a ton of settings you can do it all from the watch there is something you can also modify from your phone and maybe even the computer i'm not sure um but you can do them all on the watch and i love it i love it because it takes us to the next point which is how the watch is resistance to disuse so <laughs> we talked about it a bit earlier. You see, the watch quality, the build quality is very strong. So I don't think this will be an issue for the disuse. Uh, I think if you take care of it, or maybe even not, the watch will last a very long time. But in this year's, <laughs> there is that thing of, of companies to create apps to make your stuff works. The thing is with that is that if the company go bankrupt and you need the app to make the watch work, you end up with an empty shell. And this one, as it's very independent, well, if Garmin, even if the chances that this arrive in the next few years go bankrupt is very low, well, it's not a problem because you will still be able to use the watch as it's independent from an app or a computer or any other things. The only thing you would really lose is uh, the weather. <laughs> so as you do, actually you can see it's 21 degrees outside and I have highs and lows of tw uh, 22 and 13 for today. Uh, this, I would lose it because it gets that information from the app. And I, was, I would also lose the ability to sync my activity to Garmin Connect, that also sync it to Strava. Um, that I will lose it. But um, <laughs> there is the USB connection at the back. You can use the USB cable that we will talk about a bit later. You can connect it to your computer and using, I think it's Android file transfer, the name of a little software, probably that uh, it's an Android device. I mean, it's not running the Android you know, but it's probably based on Android because, uh, well, I can extract the file with Android file transfer. So you just connect the watch to your computer with Android file transfer, and you have access to all of the folders and all of the files, and you can go into your activity folder and take your files of the activity and bam, swam it to your computer and then to Strava. So that still would not be an issue. There is, except the weather, I would really only lose uh, the ability to 
sync automatically. Not too bad. If I look at all the competition, so Karas, Sunjo, and Baller, well, sorry, you just lose everything. If the company go bankrupt or just decide to shut down the app or something like that. Now, let's pass to the next point, which is the flashlight. Ah, the flashlight. This is a feature that I love a lot and I will compare it with the Phoenix. Uh, the way it works is that you double click on the top button and it light up a flashlight. Do the same thing here. And as you can see, the flashlight is way brighter. Do all of them are at maximum? I think yes, they are. Uh, flashlight. Yes, they are at the maximum. So both of them have different level. Maybe this one is the same. Yes, I think just the last one is way brighter. Yeah, anyways. And you also got, uh, well, I can shut down that one. <laughs> and you also have the uh, red light. Uh, if I come back here, set it to maximum, you can see that I have six hours of battery like that. And if I take it to the lowest one, I would get, uh, now it's seven days, but with full battery, it's because I already tested uh, in the French video, it's eight days of battery uh, on that maximum level. Uh, this one will give you one day. And uh, if you go into the menu just right here, it can also have a distress pattern that will uh, make a flashing SOS and also call your um, emergency contact if you are connected to the internet and have set up your emergency contact. And if you go into strobe, you can enable a blink mode that will blink just like that or just like that. Uh, you also got a custom one. You, you can do uh, a lot of things with that. Uh, let's go back. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, this is very useful if, for example, you go running at night, you don't bring a flashlight, you got one on your wrist. It's not the strongest flashlight, but yeah, well, this one is kind of strong. So yeah, it's very good. Uh, I did already use it, not with that one, with the tactics, but it's the very same thing. There was one uh, night that I did forget to bring my tail light on, on my bike. So I just picked that one and that was perfect. Uh, so very useful feature. Uh, you may think it's a gadget until you start using it. There is not a day that I at least use it twice. Sometime I might use it 10 times a day. It's a very handy tool to have on your wrist, flashlight. Seriously, it's awesome. Uh, the next point is about how is it possible to use the watch upside down? And unfortunately it's not, and I think it's a shame. If I look at my Garmin tactics, it's the same watch, it's the same interface. It's very well done when you start to navigate. And actually, if that one looks uh, less bright, it's because it's not at 100% like this one. The, this is the very same screen. So, <laughs> you see, I can go up and down with my thumbs. I can select with my index. I can go back with that one or just use my uh, other finger just right here. It's very easy to navigate inside the watch because it was well thought. Now, if I'm left-handed or just someone that like to use its watch on the right hand, well, this will be an issue uh, because my thumb now don't have access to it. So I will need to use my index over here and my thumb here. And it's probably not as comfortable as it is uh, when you are uh, right-handed and use your watch on the left hand. That would have been great if Garmin give the ability to use it just like that and reverse the screen so a left-handed can use it the same way. Uh, actually, yeah, the button are engraved, but I don't know, just give the ability to to do it, it, I think it would have been great. Yeah, I know also 
the flashlight is now on the wrong side as it will point up on my face but uh, at least maybe just give the ability to do to do it anyway i've got uh i've got a subscriber uh, that already said into a video that uh, he is left-handed and use it on the right hand and it goes very well. I think it's just, just something great to add on your watch. The next point is about the quantity of sport available inside the watch and this, <laughs> uh, they improve it with the release of that watch but this is now available on the Phoenix Tactics and probably Apex, I didn't test it, but they now uh, well, when you want to start an activity, you go on the start stop button. This is the activity that I do the most. They are here because, well, I did them recently. And if I don't find the activity that I want to do, because I do it just some time to time, I can go at the bottom, go on add. And before you had a lots of activities uh, to scroll down. And now the menu is very short because they put it into groups. So if, for example, I go in cycling, I will find bike indoor, mountain bike, e-bike, e-mountain bike, cyclocross, gravel bike, bike commute, bike tour, road bike, triathlon. And to swimming, I will find open water, triathlon, swim run, gym, I will find cardio, high intensity interval, yoga, pilates, elliptical, stair stepper, climb indoor, bouldering, row indoor, tread miles, bike indoor, floor climb, winter's board. We've got a lot of stuff. Well, let's keep going up. See, before it was all of that one after the other. And yeah, that was a lot. And there's also outdoors. And there's also running. And you see, there's a lot of activity to select. And what's great is that they are all inside the watch. So you don't need to sync it. They are just all built in. You select it and you go. And if you have an activity that is not there, well, you can create one by going on other. Uh, the only downside is that your activity logo will always be that character that have those two arms up in the air instead of a logo that represents your activity. In the next point, we will talk about how is it easy to configure the interface of the watch uh, as you wish. By the way, this is not a tutorial video. This is a review video. So I, when I show you those stuff, I will go very quickly into it. Uh, because if you want to see how to do it, I have a complete tutorial on that video. Well, in fact, I will have done it with another watch, uh, Phoenix or Tactics or whatever. Uh, it's the very same thing. So take a look at that video. You will may also find a lot of tutorials more shorter about specific things on my tutorial channel, which is where that video come from. So enjoy. But uh, let's come back to the subject. That was the interface. Uh, by the way, this one, a lot of people ask me which interface it is. What is the name when you're looking at it into um, the uh, Garmin Connect store or something like that? Well, I, I don't know because I'd never go there. It's built in. So when you go inside that menu inside a watch face just from there you can move from a watch face to another and it's just right there it's that one there was there is that one that was great too this is the one you had uh, on the garmin phoenix 6 series uh, but my favorite now is uh, this one uh, you pick the one you want and then well, when you're satisfied, the mine is this one, you can uh, change the data. So for example, here you see it's Tuesday 6, but it can also be six, uh, September 6, uh, and a number of steps in the day. So 3,848 since the beginning of the day, uh, sunset and sunrise time. So actually uh, you see there is the sun into uh, the day timeline so this will be night and it will set at 1921 uh, my hearth rate my body battery that I'm not sure what this is uh, this is an estimate of uh, what time I could do with 5k but that's a bit fast for me I'm not running this fast 
uh, VO2 max, uh, calories burn. I think this is the calories I did burn since the beginning of the day, but my active, active calorie burns was uh, this one. Uh, number of climb, uh, of number of floor climbs, uh, batteries, and probably the, those info are not showing up because I'm not wearing uh, the watch uh, recently because I did return to my tactics. Uh, let's put it just like that. You can change all the information like that all around. So just let go out of here. Uh, I did show you what I wanted to show. The next point is about the widgets. The widgets, actually they call it glance now, glance, uh, are those things. So when you start from uh, the main page, you can uh, navigate with the up and down button or your finger if you're like, um, and you have a lot of uh, features, for example, uh, we've got weather in which we can see that is now 21 degrees outside and it feels like 21. It's partly cloudy. Uh, there is actually 0% of uh, ch chances of rain. Uh, the highs and lows of the days, uh, that's in Celsius actually. And the wind come from northeast and it's at 8 kilometers per hour as uh, 16, uh, 20, uh, 15, uh, 14, sorry. Uh, if you go down, just like that, you have several page inside here. You can see that, uh, you can see the, the hourly forecast for the next hours, for the next 12 or sometime maybe 11 hours. And if you go down, you have the daily forecast, the 12 hour trend. And this one says that the air quality is good, that the dew point is 16 uh, degrees. Um, yep, uh, UV index too low and the relative humidity is 73 percent uh, this is all the information you can have just from here uh, you can also access um, most of the stuff you see all around here is related to a widget so actually you see 21 degrees outside if i just hold my finger onto it i will uh, end up on that widget uh, what other widget do we have? This is the sunset, sunrise one. I can see that is uh, the sunrise was at 6.17 this morning and it will set at 19.21. Tonight I also got the timeline, tw twilight, sorry. <laughs> and uh, I can see the sunrise and sunset time for the next days. And if I want, I can also press and hold that button and change current location for a CD search, save location, or just use the map to point somewhere in the world and see what is the sunrise and sunset time for that place. Uh, there is the ABC, altimeter barometer compass. So uh, the compass is on top, just right here. The altimeter is just right here. And the barometer actually says that the atmospheric pressure is stable or almost. Otherwise, the, the arrow would point uh, somewhere else. If I go down, I can see that uh, my, my altitude. So yeah, it might vary, vary a little bit because uh, of this. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, this is the atmospheric pressure. The altitude is based on um, on the barometric pressure. So yes, it might vary a little bit, but it end up correct itself automatically. Uh, <laughs> and finally, this is the compass on which you can, uh, if you want, lock heading. So you choose in which direction direction you want to lock it, set it and it will help you to uh, go in straight line, as you see on lock heading. Uh, you have some stuff like that uh, from here to there. And if, for example, there's that training status, I don't care about it. I can just click here and remove glints. Boom, it's gone. Uh, you've got, uh, this is my last activity. Uh, number of steps of the day, hearth rate, all those things. My sleep, uh, yes, I did not sleep a lot last night, uh, but you can see the quality of the sleep. So I did deep sleep for two hours, light sleep for three hours, ran for 20 minutes, and I've been awake for 11 minutes into that. 
and as you slept too little and the overall quality was low, you may feel very tired today. Overall quality was low. Oh, that's it's not that bad. Whatever. <laughs> Uh, you can also see it on a bigger screen if you use your phone and uh, yeah um, So yeah, you got a lot of information and if you want to add some you can come here and add glance and You have all of those things available Into it. So yes, there is really a lot of options available for widgets and that's awesome now, let's talk about the multi-sport mode. Uh, this is very, very well done. Let's return over here. If I start an activity just right here and I will, I don't have any uh, multi-sport mode uh, pre-built in inside or I don't often do it, but sometime. Uh, you can select multi-sport just right here and you can create a triathlon, duathlon, break, swim run or custom. So for example, if we go inside custom, uh, well, you can see on my other watches that I receive a notification on the phone saying that uh, a Garmin Connect app. Well, uh, this means that if I go on the Garmin Connect app, I would have a keyboard to input it. I can go with the button just like that and select, if they wanted to give it a name. So I can go on the letters just like that, or I can press the keyboard and say test. Just like that. Select with my finger. All right. So let's start with a run. The second activity will be a hike. The next one will be a bike. The next one will be pole swim. And we're gonna end that with walk because five is the maximum you can do. Well, uh, do you want to have transition time between those activities? Do you want to be able to lock the device? and all of those options. But this is not something that I use uh, because I, I don't like it because you need to prepare yourself before. And well, after the swim, it was the walk. So you can't go back on your bike. There is a feature that uh, you see if I'm into biking so let's start that activity so the biking activity is started if i want to change the activity i can press and hold the start stop button select another sport let's go pool swim and it's changed i did 10 seconds of bike and now i'm pool swimming and i've got my information for pool swim very very well done i love it we'll just create a lap whatever stop that and I will discard it. Thank you. How did I do that? Because this is not built in by default. I press and hold the menu button, go up to settings, and then go down to short um, uh, hotkeys. <laughs> and here you see, when, it's, when I hold start, it says change sport. There is a lot of other options available into it, but I like to set change sport into that. I have a full video about the option that are inside here. If you want to see it, it's on the upper uh, left, right corner, whatever, one of those corner, it's available just right there. Uh, but I think it's a very useful feature. This will create a multi-sport activity inside your Garmin Connect app. However, if you automatically send your information to Strava, they will all be a separate activity. This is made like that. It seems that Strava does not handle multi-sport activity yet. The next point is about the music app. Very well done. I'm not using it, well, at maximum because you can store music inside it. You can use Spotify, you can use Deezer, and some other less, very less uh, popular music services. Um, I don't do it because it does drain the battery a lot to connect your Bluetooth headphone to your watch and listen to music. It drains the battery a lot, but if you really want to go out and run with your Bluetooth headphone without your phone, just your watch and your music, well, you can do it. 
<laughs> and, and it's very well done. It works very well. It plays very well. You can control it very well. It's very easy to use, but it drains the battery. That's why I don't use it. But just like right now, well, not right now because the music is not playing. I have a Sonos system. I start my music on my phone, on Spotify. I cast it to my Sonos system. And when I come to my watch, you won't be able to see it actually because there is no music playing, but you always have access to the music app by pressing and holding the lower left button. It takes us to that page and from here, I'm able to make play, pause, skip, and have even uh, more uh, option just right here. I can even control the volume straight from my watch. So I'm not really using uh, my phone because it, it is quicker to do it on my watch. <laughs> this is uh, this is beautiful. When I am uh, cycling, uh, instead of putting the, mu the music on my watch, I put it on my phone on speaker, but I often pause it because if there is people around, I won't I won't be disturbing with my music or if I stop at a red light and there is people, well, I pause it. The only thing I have to do is to press and hold the lower left button and press the start stop button because if it's played, this will be a pause. So I can stop my music in one second instead of just taking it out of the back, uh, unlock the phone. It's not working very well because I'm all wet. <laughs> Uh, trying to go into the application and finally before I successfully turn off the music well the light is green and I did just look stupid <laughs> works very well I love the music app just right here and uh, do I have access to it if I whoops sorry if I go here inside them uh, inside the menu here music providers uh had a provider no this need to be done inside the app so i have access to my music uh control phone or had providers um once it's synced uh this watch can be connected to the wi-fi so you can sync your spotify account with your watch on wi-fi Got someone that sent me messages. I will just put that on airplane mode. All right. <laughs> so yeah, you can store your playlist inside of the watch, and uh, when you modify it, you just resync it. It will be slow. It, it is the slowest Wi-Fi connection you will ever had, at least in the last ten years. Uh, <laughs> but it worked. So. You won't be able to sync your, uh, your playlist 10 minutes before leaving. You will need to plan some hours to sync. Uh, but when it's done, it's done. And you can sync it while you're at home or sleeping or just, you don't, you don't care. You just sync it and it will be done over time. It is slow, but it works and it drains the battery too. <laughs> but you don't need to sync it with your watch to connect it with the USB connection. You just, you just let it go. It's very well done, but I'm not using it because it's drained the battery. The next point is about the battery. So I will take my white papers just right here and we will take some note. Um, okay, so the battery, we will compare it with uh, the Phoenix. Of course, I think it's worth to do it because it's the very same thing as a Phoenix. Sorry, I will set that focus to manual. So uh, yes, because it's the same watch as a Phoenix, I think it's worth to compare it. Uh, so that uh, compare with a, seven, a Phoenix 7X, because if it's not a, a X model, uh, that it, it, it won't last uh, this long. Uh, we will set the in Enduro, and we're gonna add the solar option. I really want to separate them because uh, this is the number from Garmin. I did my own test. I will reveal the um, my result at the end of this. I think the number Garmin gives are kind of real, but about the solar, they need. They say that to get there, you need. I don't remember the number by heart, but you need three hours of strong sun every day 
to get it. So depending on what you do, you will probably not get it. So, <laughs> um, so into smart watch mode, with the Phoenix, you would get 28 days of battery. With the Andro, you get 34 days. That's a lot more. And with the Solar, you could go up to 46 days. Uh, when you are into GPS mode, so if you use GPS only, as we have talked earlier, the GPS system only, with the Phoenix, you get 89 hours of GPS. With the Indro, you go up to 110 hours. And with the Solar, you could potentially go up to 150, 150 hours. This is a lot. If you go with uh, the GPS, plus for all those other uh, those all, all those other one uh, this will be a little bit less it's 63 hours for the phoenix it's 78 hours for the andro and could go up to 96 with the solar in terms of music like i said it drains the battery a lot if you listen to music with the phoenix you will get a dead battery from 100 to 0 in 16 hours and this go up to 20 hours with the Enduro and they did not give numbers for the solar uh, probably just because it drains too quickly for it to make a significant difference and then <laughs> there is the expedition mode expedition uh, this one the expedition is is a GPS mode, but instead of tracking just like that, it will track you like every hours. So you were there, you were there, you were there, and then you were there, and it will create straight line in between. Where was my point? There, whatever. <laughs> um, this is what it will do. I think it will also disable the earth rate and many things. Uh, with the Phoenix, you got 62 days of tracking. With the Andro, you go up to 77. This is a very long run. And with the Solar, which is probably possible because if you're on expedition, you're probably outside. This is 172 days. But remember, no earth rate and know a lot of things and you just get one position every hour or something like that okay now you probably want my numbers well it's very impressive uh the tactics and the phoenix was already very impressive but this one wow <laughs> so this little guy the andro 2 i wear it on my first charge for 14 days and two hours before the battery goes dead. And into those 14 days, I did 40 hours of GPS on auto mode. Probably I would have get more of both if it was on GPS only. Um, but well, I tested that way <laughs> and I also did one hour and 40 minutes of non GPS activity. Uh, when you do an activity, it does drain a bit more battery than when you are on smartwatch mode, but not as much on GPS mode. So it's just worth to say it. Uh, that was 14 days pretty much intense. I did a 200K on a bike. I did another up and go to Montreal. I did a lot of activities into those 14 days. Uh, and, and yeah, well, when I did test my Garmin tactics, I've, I've, I think I did go to up to 17 days, 
but there was way less hours of GPS. So this, this is very, very impressive. Now let's talk about the temperature for a bit. It is recommended to use the watch between minus 20 to uh, plus 45 degrees Celsius. Uh, if you are into Fahrenheit, well, it's minus 4 uh, to 113 Fahrenheit degrees. I did not test it in winter because, well, it was released this summer and winter is not here yet. But I did test the previous uh, tactics in Phoenix into the winter and I did test it uh, way cooler than minus 20 and it was perfectly fine and it was uh, out of the jacket. I mean, it was still on my skin, but it was out of the jacket. I was able to read the screen. Uh, I think it was about minus 30. I did test it a few times. No problem. The screen was still fluid. A little bit less fluid, but it was still fluid and very usable. So yes, it seems that there is a margin. You can go a bit, a bit cooler, probably a bit warmer, but this is the numbers from Garmin. So do what you want with it. Next point. Now let's talk about the notification and response. So you can get notification on your phone and they will be transmitted to your watch screen. So if someone sends you a text message, like the one that sent me a text message a little, bit, a little bit earlier, and I set it to airplane mode so we're not disturbed, it was showing up right there on the screen. I got the name of the person, uh, the application it sent it to, and like uh, text messaging, messenger, or all of those things. And uh, you've got the message right under it. From there, you can just see it. Well, if it's a call, it's, you can also see you got a call from this person. You can answer the call with the, the watch. Uh, if it's a text message, you can reply to it, but you are only able to send a pre-built uh, text message. You have some that are built in inside the watch, and if you go on the Garmin Connect app, you can build your own pre-text. Uh, pre I guess. <laughs> um, so it, it's well done, but it's not a smart watch. It's a navigation tool. It's a sport watch. It's a GPS watch, call it as you want. And it's also a smart watch, but it's main use. It's a navigation tool, a GPS watch, a sport watch. That is also a smart watch. So if you compare it, for example, with an Apple Watch, well, probably that you can do more stuff from your watch to your phone than you can do with it. But it is different type of use. So it's well done, but you can't really compare it with the smartwatch. Now let's talk about trust. <laughs> I trust that device a lot. I mean, it's quick to say that I trust it a lot, but I trust it a lot because I did test the Tactics, the Phoenix, the Apex, the previous version, and it's pretty much the same watch and I do trust the brand, uh, at least for the Phoenix uh, family. Uh, it never failed me. In fact, it failed me one time, with it, it was with the Phoenix, uh, no, it was with the Tactics uh, Delta. So the previous Tactics. I was abusing the navigation system. I think inside three minutes, I did a lot of re-navigation and uh, change into the itinerary for a very long distance. And it was pretty hard on the computer, I guess, and it crashed. <clears throat> but then it reboot and it asked me if I want to continue my activity. So there's a fail safe. So I never lost an activity and it's very important for me. I like to save my activity and be able to uh, watch them later, uh, analyze my data and those kind of things. I like to do it. It's also a device that can save your life. A watch, not this one, not that series, but a watch already saved my watch, my, my life twice. 
uh, one time was into fall, I was lost into the mountain. I was out of the track and I was not able to come back, so I did use the watch to come back on the track. And the other time was um, on the top of the mountain into winter. I was not able to see nothing. My foot was erased. I was not able to come back to the forest outside of the snowstorm. Uh, it was very cold. I needed to get out quick and the watch helped me to go back on my track. Uh, so in this type of situation, you want something that you can rely on, that you can trust. And this device, I trust it. Uh, the GPS data is good, the earth rate data is good, and it doesn't fail. Now, about the water resistance, this is a 10 ADM water resistance. This means that you can swim or dive down to 100 meter deep. This also means that you can wash your hand with it, you can go out under the rain, you can take your shower, take your bath, you can swim with it, you can um, dive, <laughs> and you can also do fast water sport like jet ski or those kind of things. There is no problem unless you dive under 100 meter. That's very good. So basically you can do pretty much everything you need unless you have very special needs. Now, let's talk about mapping. And for this, we will come back onto that screen view. Mapping, uh, what a wonderful things. Uh, if I go on bike, for example, and I go, well, I will start the activity and I will go down to that map page. And let's say I want to go somewhere, I can, um, well, I can pan and zoom, of course, uh, with the buttons. So this, this does uh, up and down. And if I press here, it does left and right. So you can still use it if you have big gloves. Uh, actually, I think this is disabled. I will need to re-enable it. Turn, oh, no, touch screen off. Turn, touch screen on, okay. So if, you are on touch screen on and you whoops click here and now you can move anywhere you want so let's say for example i will zoom out and then i will move to montreal i will zoom out a bit more sorry it focus on my finger focus on the screen thank you and yeah, I wanna go just right there. I will hold the button just right here, hold it again, and say go. Uh, it may take a long time to calculate, and well, maybe it will not calculate it because uh, I'm inside, and I think it really need a good GPS signal to build it. I did test it with, uh, with, my, French to, uh, with my French video and it was not able to calculate it. Uh, but when you are outside, it goes kind of fast. Uh, probably that it will calculate it inside one minute, I would say. Uh, now it may take some time. You can do it straight on the watch. You can do it on the phone, if you have the Garmin Explore app, you can download the map inside your uh, phone. So you can see it on the phone, but you can also point something with your phone. Of course, of course, it goes, oh, well, it, it's working. You see? So I'm here and uh, I, will, I, will, I will need to go on the road to start it and it tell me that I will need to turn left in 250 meters and actually moving a lot because I'm inside, of course, but uh, you can see that it is working. I would had alarm and all those kind of things at every turn and it's very, very well done. Uh, let's cancel that <laughs> for now, discard. All right, thank you, Garmin. Um, so yeah, with the Garmin Explore app, you point it, you touch it, and you send it to the watch, and it will do the same calculation. Very, very well done. Again, uh, you can also go on the Garmin Connect app, create the very exact itinerary you wanna go, because if you point to somewhere, it will 
create kind of the shortest route using the activity you are. So if you are cycling, it will use most popular uh, cycling road or something like that. Uh, not always the best, but you will end up where you point. So that's a good thing. When you use the Garmin Connect app, you can really see where you want to go. So that might be info if you plan uh, a long itinerary or something like that. Very useful feature again. And there's another thing you can do that I love. Uh, so let's say that I come here again on bike and before I start the activity, I will go into navigation, I think, no. No, well, yes, round trip course. And from here, I will say, well, give me a 10 kilometer loop. I want to do a 10 kilometer loop in any direction. And let's go. So just like that, it will calculate from here, 9.9 .9 kilometers with 81 kilometers of uh, elevation gain. It will give me a second option of 11.1 .1 kilometer. And it's actually already calculating, calculating a third one and it's done 8.9 kilometers. So it's around 10 kilometer. And there we are. Uh, I've got three options. I can just select it and it will tell me where to turn to come back here following a road and doing about 10 kilometers. Very, very well done. I've got a question from someone that asked me if um, the Garmin Phoenix or the Tactics was faster to do those things. And no, it's the very same thing. <laughs> uh, some people say that the uh, Garmin Enduro 2 run, uh, run the CPU slower or slowly to uh, get a longer battery life. No, 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 it's just thicker with a bigger battery. That's why it lasts longer. Uh, it's the same uh, speed. When I navigate inside the watch, I can feel that is, it is as smooth as the Tactics and the Phoenix. And when I do those calculations, in fact, <laughs> the first test I did was quicker on the Enduro and the next one was quicker on the, uh, on the Tactics. It's just because it create a random route and well, because it's random, the time can be a little bit random too. So no, it's the very, very same watch. Now let's talk about how you manage this, the map inside uh, the watch. Uh, very easy when you go here uh, into the activity and go down to map manager, you, you see here I've got 18.2 gigabyte available and if I go into topoactive map, I got my North America that uh, weighs 9.1 gigabyte. It will be updated when it's need to be updated. And if you go, for example, in Europe, Asia, Australia, or something like that, you go on add map. And actually I would need to connect it to my Wi-Fi. I just did not do it. And we will not go up to the end of that process because, because it will take hours to, to be completed but I would be able to select another continent and download it on the watch. Again, this is not something you do one hour before you leave. It will take hours to complete, to download everything. It will be very long, but you can do it straight from the watch and it's free. Before you had to go on the Garmin website, download it, uh, connect it with the USB cable, send it to the watch and you had to buy it. Now it's all built in and it's free. It's wonderful. And it's the same thing on the Tactics and the Phoenix. Again, it's the very same watch. <laughs> Starring, I don't know why I, I do that on every video. Uh, <laughs> there's something wonderful onto that watch. If you press that button here and you navigate to power off, you can actually power off the watch. And why is it wonderful? because some sport watch don't do it, like Swindo and some Poller. And I don't know why they, they can't be turned off. This means that you, with those watch, it means you can't store it and use it in two or three months because the battery will be dead. Now, because I can turn it off, I will be able to use it if I'm not using it for a while. Now, uh, the only thing I need to do to power it on is to press and hold the upper left button and it will take, I would say, between 20 to 30 seconds to power back on. Isn't it 
beautiful. Okay, now let's talk about the weight of the watch. Um, okay, with that band, it's not that um, heavy. <laughs> uh, well, it, it's a question of perspective, but with that band, in fact, the, the, the case of the watch is a bit more heavy than the Phoenix. Uh, but with that band, it is lighter than the Phoenix with the silicone band. That one. <laughs> Actually, because of this band, this watch is still way heavier than this one. Uh, with that one, it, it, it did feel, um, it does feel great. Uh, but like I said, uh, on I was feeling it on balance at the beginning, but uh, I think you just, you just get used to it. Uh, I don't feel it anymore. It, it's just there at my wrist all the time and I don't feel it anymore. So, yes, it's heavy, but you'll get used to it, probably. Now, let's talk about the language available inside the watch. So let's zoom back in. We will go into the menu, just right here into system. And as you can see into language, we have access to English, Spanish, French, and I don't know those languages, Italian, uh, Netherlands, uh, Portuguese, and a lot of language that was Korean and Thanks, search, and you've got all access to those. They are all built in, you just press on it and the watch will change to that language. If you're not speaking English, you want something else, you have seen all the language available inside the watch. Maybe some more will come out later, but actually this is the one available. Now, let's talk about how the screen occupy the space of the watch. And I think they made a pretty well, a uh, pretty good job. Uh, I like the fact that there is a bezel. That looked good. Uh, <laughs> the screen use a kind of great part inside. They could have done better uh, if there was no solar panel, but actually that big uh, stuff that you see all around that ring is the solar panel. So this is a place that can't be occupied by the screen, but at least it have a purpose. And it's a great purpose because it gives you uh, way more battery. Um, I did see a lot of uh, watch that does have a big ring of nothing inside and I think it's a shame. Garmin does a pretty good job at it on this one. If you go with the Phoenix, this might be a little bit stupid for some model. Uh, actually, this one does have the same solar ring, but if you take into the Phoenix model, the non-solar one, you just have that empty space for nothing. Now, let's talk about the quantity of information you can have on the same screen. It's a lot. If we take a look at uh, the main screen I have just right here. This is, I think, the, the one that can give you the most information. If we count the hour, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine information on the same screen. And if you go into inactivity, it's the same thing. It's nine information or nine case. You can maybe go up to 10 and maybe a bit more because some, uh, some screens, some data screens can have two information. So for example, you can have one screen for elevation up and elevation down. So maybe even more. And the screen is big enough so you can see all those small information very well if you're not too old or just still have a great vision. Now let's talk about alarm. And this is again very well done. So let's take a look at it. If we go here, I press and hold that button, go down to clocks and go up to, uh, no, just select alarms. And there's actually an alarm for 8.15 that is actually off. I can set it to on and actually I can see that it will vibrate and not ring. <laughs> if I go down, I can modify this right here. The status is on, it will ring at 8.15. I can modify it for 8.20. I guess. Repeats, it's off. Uh, so it will ring one time and then it will go off. But I can also have daily, weekdays, weekend or custom. So if I just want to have it on Monday 
and Thursday and Saturday, well, that's what I will have if I go back here. Well, it says custom, custom, yeah. Uh, I can change it or just put it back to uh, off. Uh, sound and vibe. Uh, that, that, I love it. Actually, oh, well, it's sound and vibe. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the option, sound and vibe. And actually you can see it's just vibration. You can have tone, vibration, or tone and vibration. And actually I, I like to have just vibration because uh, it will just vibrate. <laughs> so, um, Think of when I'm on, a, on an expedition and you're in a dorm, you want to put an alarm, but you don't want to wake up everybody with your stupid alarm. It will just vibrate on your wrist. You will, you will be the only one to realize that it's ring. And well, I just tested again this morning. I was, I was sleeping very well and, it's, it, and it did start vibrating at my wrist and it did wake me up again. So, I think it's very well done. I like to not have a vibe when I wake up. It's aggressive and all the, I ooh, like a, a, a tone or a chime or something to wake up. Ugh. Yeah, just vibration only. It's awesome. I like it. And actually I will just go out of there and set it to off because I don't want it tomorrow morning. Speaking about alarm, well, let's speak about sleep. Uh, as we have seen a bit earlier inside here, I've got a sleep monitor that tells me uh, a note. Was there a note? It was saying 61. Oh yeah, score 61, time of sleep, quality fair, short and unbalanced and whatever. This is the information we got here. Uh, you can have bigger information on the phone app. We already told that a bit earlier. And the only thing you need to have this is to wear the watch while you sleep. There's nothing else to do. It will just track your sleep when you sleep. That's it. <laughs> um, if you have more than one Garmin watch, you might run into a trouble sometime. If you look at your watch, you it will, it will track your sleep, always. But if you wanna see it on the Garmin Connect app, you will need to say to Garmin Connect that this is your preferred tracking device. If it's not, it will not transfer that information to the, to the Garmin Connect app. You will just lose it. <laughs> it will track it if you wanna see it in the morning, but it will just not transfer on the Garmin Connect app. Yes, it's a bit stupid, but that's the way it works. And probably that not much people have more than watch, have more than one Garmin watch. Actually, I do have um, probably over 10 Garmin watch just because, well, I test them. Still about the sleep tracking, is this watch will wake you up because you wear it and you got notification on your phone and those kind of things, well, it's pretty well made. There is two things that will prevent that. And it's if we go into that menu here, you will find a do not disturb feature. You enable it, you have no more uh, disturb on your watch. And you also have a sleep mode and all those two will be enabled automatically on a schedule. Uh, so for example, when the do not disturb mode is enabled, you will still get your notification on the watch, but it will not vibrate nor tone. So if for example, I set it to 22 o'clock, go on do not disturb mode. And at midnight, I'm still awake and I'm on my computer, go on my banking website and they send me a text message with a six digit number that I have to input on the website to access my account. I will receive it on my phone, but because I'm expecting it, I will take a look at my watch and I will see it. But if I was not looking at it, well, I would I'd just never see it. So very well done. Uh, there's just, uh, oh, uh, the, 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 um, Sleep mode uh, will decrease the uh, amount of brightness of your screen and those things like that. So if you want to take, so if you set your brightness to 100%, <laughs> for example, and at night 
you want to take a look at the time while you sleep, it will be lower at the, the percent that you want, but by default, it's probably at five or 10%. Very well done, again. Uh, the only downside is, well, the do not disturb mode does not enable for me at all the time. I think that's my conclusion that when I'm doing an activity, while it pass on do not disturb mode, it failed to pass on do not disturb mode because I'm doing an activity. That's what I think it is. Because sometime the do not disturb mode is not enabled and I do wake up at night. Then I enable it and then it's fine. But I was wake up. But I'm pretty sure that it's because I'm doing activity at the time frame I set the do not disturb to be enabled. But whatever. The next point is about how the watch motivates you to move. And not a lot. <laughs> I mean, if you are looking for a watch that will say, hey, congratulations, you walk five steps today. And now, oh, congratulations, you have done a hundred steps today. Oh, congratulations, you have climbed a floor today. That's not the watch for you. <laughs> um, well, you do have a tracking for floors. Actually, it's set by default 10. It will tell you when you do, when you do your 10 floors. You can disable it if you don't like it. Uh, you also got a daily step challenge. And it... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, that's something. Actually, it's about 8,000 uh, steps, but if you succeed your goal, it go higher and higher and higher and higher. And in the winter, I do walk a lot. And I remember last winter, <laughs> there was a point I was needed to do 30,000 steps a day. And if I do it, it will go again higher and higher and higher. So at some point, it kind of stupid. But um, yeah, that, that's the only two one you have by default, the floors and number of steps. And it will tell you, yay, you, you did it when, when, when you reach that goal. Uh, there was one thing, I, Polar. Polar does have that, and I think it's very good. Uh, it's something that did motivate me to move a little bit more. They give you an inactivity stamp after one hour of not moving. So after 55 minutes, they say, hey, you need to move now or you're gonna get an inactivity step. And so, well, that does it when I was working on my computer, editing my video and those kind of stuff. And I was just going up, do a few push up, push up and or burpees or those kind of things for a minute and go back to the computer. Uh, I think that was funny. It's not available here. Now, let's talk about the altimeter. It's a barometric altimeter, so it's very well done. Um, you got precise information. Uh, I, think, I think on the 200K ride I did recently, I did it with that watch. Um, there was three or five meter of difference, or was it the same? Well, here's the result. Uh, I don't see it actually, but you see it, so you judge. I think it's a very close difference. Very, very close difference for a 10 hour and a half activity uh, and 200K distance. I did start at the same point I finished. So, well, it's very, very, very good. <laughs> Okay, now let's talk about price. And I will not show price because the price may vary from a country to another and from time over time. So I will leave link into the description. You just click on it, you will end up on the store and you will see what price it is. If you do a purchase through those links, I will do a commission out of it. So thank you if you do it. By the way, um, Garmin does not send me that watch. Uh, in fact, Garmin never had sent me a single watch. I did buy it at the same price. Uh, at the same price, you will buy it. I buy it with my own money just to do those review. So, uh, yes, it's very honest, and I'm not paid to say uh, anything I don't believe in, and I will never do that. I think the confidence you can give me 
because I'm Hannes is more important than the box, the, 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 the taller company can put in my pocket. So it's all very honest. It's all what I think. So uh, the price, the price. Uh, yes, it's an expensive watch. It's, it's an expensive watch. Uh, but I think if you compare it with the Garmin Phoenix, actually in US dollar, it's $100 more. Uh, you get a bigger battery, you get a stronger flashlight. I think it's worth it if you like the look. Actually, I think I would still go with the Phoenix just because I can have it black instead of charcoal gray with green buttons and yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> uh, the watch I still use is the Garmin Tactics. That's the one I will keep using for uh, until probably they release the Tactics 8, probably. Whatever. Uh, so I think, yes, you got what you pay for. You got the watch that got the strongest battery. You got the watch that got a great GPS and navigation systems. And when you calculate all of this, I think it's worth the money you will pay for. And I would see it as an investment as it will last you for many years. Hopefully. Now, how is it user friendly? Well, I think it is. <laughs> um, bro, I think there was a lot, there, there will be a lot of people that would say that it's very hard to use, but the thing is, if you keep to basic, well, when you want to start an activity, uh, well, you will have a default uh, page. You don't need to change it, but if you want to change it, you can. Actually, you see, I, actually, you see, I, I lose the weather because I put my uh, phone on airplane mode. But if you want to start an activity, you go on start stop. You select the activity you want. So let's go for a walk. I select it, and then I will press start, and the activity is started. You can navigate from a page to another, and when you want to stop the activity, you press the stop button, and you will have the option to save your activity and it's done uh, <laughs> you can resume it or uh, like I will do right now I will just discard it and it's done you have a lot of options but you know you don't need to use all of those options uh, it's a sport watch what you want you want a, a, a default screen with some information on it and you want to start activities uh, if you worry about the <laughs> those widgets, you don't need to use those widgets. You don't need to use the stuff that worry you, but you just need to navigate inside the watch. And I think it's very well done. I think it's very well about the navigation. Uh, it's very, you see the up and down button. I love it, the select and the back button. It's very well done. And that thing to go onto the altitude, just press and hold on the screen. I think it's all very well done and easy to navigate. If you take the time to play with it just an hour, go into the menu and the sub menu and explore it, it's not a monster. It's it's my favorite watch, seriously. Well, the Phoenix families. Now let's talk about wireless compatibilities. Compatibilities. <laughs> uh, you can connect Bluetooth device you can connect ANT and ANT Plus device. You can connect to Wi-Fi and you can't connect to LTE. So no cellular network on this one. If you want to share your location to someone, you can do it with, with LiveTrack, but you will need your phone with an internet connection. Otherwise, you cannot. There is no LTE connection on that watch. But for device for hearth rate, speedometer and golf club, those kind of thing. Uh, well, it's pretty much sure you can connect it on it. Now let's talk about the USB connection at the back. This one here, uh, very well done again. Uh, this, is, this is the cable you need to connect it. Every Garmin watch used the same cable since many years and it's very easy to connect. You can connect it on uh, both sides. You just come just like that. You can remove it and it's a solid connection. I mean, you can shake it and it won't fail. Uh, the only downside of it is that it's still a USB-A connection. It 
It's about time to get a USB-C, Garmin, please. But it's not this bad. You don't, you don't even need to connect it to a computer, so it's fine. <laughs> but uh, at least, please, release the cable. Give me the option to buy it or do something. It's about time. It's USB-C since a while. And I just want to remember you, this is not a tutorial video, this is a review video. So if you want to see my tutorial about that watch or the watch in the same family, it's just right here or right there, never sure. About safety feature, we ju we've just talked about a live track that gives you the ability to share your location to members of your family, friends, or just to everyone if you are doing an activity that you want to share with everyone. Um, you can also program uh, emergency contacts. So if the watch detect you uh, got an accident, well, you can send a message to up to three person. It can be uh, SMS or uh, it can also be uh, email, but you still need to have internet connection on your phone. So this won't work anywhere, but it will send a message like, hey, I've got an accident and I'm at this location. They will be able to click on the link and see where it is, call emergency for you or just go reach you or send an helicopter or whatever, or maybe just call you. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that's that's a safety feature. That's great. There's another feature that I love and it's the auto climb. So let's, for example, come here inside uh, bike. Uh, there is two pages here. So this is my running page. So I've got my hearth rate, speed, average speed, uh, distance, elevation, and time. And when I do climb for uh, probably at 35 meters per minute, it will automatically change to that page on which I have my average speed, speed, distance, total calories, ascent and descent, and a graph of the elevation just right here. I've got more information about that. I think it's very useful. Another great things we have inside that watch is for muscle training. Uh, look at how it's well done. So if I start an activity here and I go into strength, uh, I can just go free and do my training, but I can also take, for example, this maximize your upper body. And I see here which muscle I will train and say, do workout, start the timer to begin the workout and start workout. All right, and it says to 10 reps of Renegade Row, and I don't know what this is, so wow, I've got an image of how to do it. Very well done. So you do your 10 reps. You uh, say, I did my 10 reps. Actually, it says zero because I didn't do any. Uh, if I do it, it will count it. And you can set your weight also. So, you, so let's say, oh, whatever, let's say five kilogram. And when you're ready to pass to the other one, you say, you press here, and that's the second uh, row, and it's very well done. So after that, you would have some other exercise showing up. Uh, you can also record your own um, if you go on the Garmin Connect app, you can select into a multitude of training and you can do your own. If you have your trainer that say, hey, do that, 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 you can sit up, set it on your watch or you can also just don't care about it then go to the gym and do your stuff. <laughs> so uh, that, that's very well done. Uh, I will just stop the workout again and I will discard it. I don't want to keep it. Uh, you also have that. I didn't test it yet, but uh, if you are into golfing, you pretty much have all of the golf course that you can download inside the watch. So you will be able to see at what distance you are from the hole and you will be able to have the wind direction and all those things. I didn't test it yet, but I think it's also a great thing to have on your watch.
Now, speaking about the application, uh, you have it on the phone, you have it on the computer, it let you read your information, that will be for another video. Um, I will make a video about the application. Um, well, you have a lot of information on it. You got your activity, you got your sleep track, uh, pretty much everything that is on the watch, you got it on the uh, phone, on the bigger screen. It is well presented. You can also get it on your big screen, on the computer. Um, again, this one is also well made and you have access to all of those information on a bigger screen and it's made. I like the fact that this screen is well made for a watch. This one is well made for a phone and the other one is well made for a computer. It's not, they just, they did not just take it and port it to another device. They are think for the device you will use it. Very well done. My final point is about the customer service. And unfortunately on that one, it's not a, bad customer service, but they really could improve it. Uh, I, I did have had a problem recently with that one, or at least I thought I have a problem. I thought that the battery was draining very fast, but maybe it was just me, or maybe I did something, I don't know, because I'm retesting it right now and everything seems fine, actually. So, but I don't know, I don't know, but I mean, maybe it's my fault because I didn't call them, but the answer on email is very slow and not as satisfied as I would expect it. Um, at least for a watch of this price. So, yeah, that's, that's what it is. Uh, I think it's the point where they could improve. So, uh, finally, do I recommend that watch? Yes, at least if you love the look. Uh, if you have the choice between a Phoenix and a Tactics and you prefer the look of the Phoenix, uh, of the Enduro, well, go for it. Um, I really love the fact that it got a stronger battery and a stronger flashlight. Well, actually that was the red one, but whatever. Uh, that I love it. Uh, I don't like the fact that this is the only color you can have. Uh, so for this reason, personally, I will stick to uh, my Garmin Tactics, but I would have loved that the Tactics had that battery and that flashlight. So yes, I recommend it. If you like the look, go for it. It's one of the best watch in the world. Well, actually, if for my case, you forget the look, it's the best watch in the world over the Tactics and the Phoenix. But, nah, it doesn't got the look, maybe, oh. Yeah, I could unscrew the back of my Phoenix and set it on the Enduro. That would make my perfect watch. Well, actually, I, I would need to do it with, oh, maybe it's possible. Maybe it's possible. Well, that's for another video. I don't think I would do it. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it, yes, I do recommend it. So this is it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy. And if you need help to find this product online, please see my links in the description. And finally, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel so you can find me back easily next time you're looking for a great review video. See ya.